Hello again everybody and welcome to another single mission flown in the DCS A10C Warthog. And I'm going to try to vary the presentation again this time by having Tech View. It's a sort of an ACMI type tool that is going to show everything that's going on in the area around my aircraft. I'll have that displayed up in a corner, tucked away somewhere so that it's not really in the way, but you can get a broad overview of what all is going on and see things that I definitely won't be picking up on as I'm flying the mission, but then also allow you to see what I'm seeing from the cockpit. So I'm going to see if I can make that work and find a, a system that makes that presentable. And we'll see how that works once we get into the air. But the mission I'm going to fly today is called Kishuri Gap. It's another mission that I have not flown before. So let me go ahead and open up the briefing and we'll see what we have in store. And the mission overview. It's a defensive close air support mission starting at 1420. It's an afternoon daylight mission. My side, USA, plus looks like a pretty much a NATO type force against Russia. So standard DCS setup. My task, of course, closer support in the A-10. I have four total AGM-65Hs, good anti-armor, anti-vehicle, anti-anything, really, missiles. And I have a an ECM pod, EOQ-131 type. I have two AIM-9s for air-to-air -air work. If I do get into an air-to-air -air engagement, which I do not expect and I'm going to avoid if I can at all help it, I have four CBU-97s. These are cluster munitions, great for anti-armor especially. And I have a lightning pod, targeting pod that I'm going to be using to identify, uh, track, and find targets as we encounter them during the mission. So the situation is that hostile forces west of the pass have assembled two companies and have been detected moving east. Allied forces will interdict hostile forces before they're in contact with friendly ground units defending Kashuri. Now the Allied forces consist of, I have two JTACs, call sign Playboy and Warrior, one on the north approach, one on the south approach. And we'll see what that means once we get into the briefing and start looking closer at the map. Uh, operating on VHF FM 30 and 40 megahertz. I have three flights of 810s. I'm going to be one of these. I believe Hog 2. All working off the same frequency. So I'm going to have a lot of air assets as you can see working in that same area. Forward is an AH-64 Apache a helicopter. Uh, providing a uh, flight of helicopters providing close air support in the same area. I have Pontiac 4 and 5 close air support F-16 MLUs. I have Colt 3 and 4, a seed, suppression of enemy air defenses aircraft, F-15A, or F-18A models. And I have Arco and Magic, tanker and an AWACS aircraft, with the AWACS aircraft up there giving me calls whenever air, enemy air units are detected. My objective is, of course, going to be to interdict armored units, T-72 and BMP-2 types, before they can engage with the defending allied forces. The weather looks pretty standard, a moderate winds ground level, you can't really glean much from the, the weather briefing you get as part of the overall mission briefing, but we'll be able to see that once we get into the cockpit a little bit more and do some planning on the fly as we go based on conditions. And again, takeoff time 1420. So let me go to the mission planner and see what else we can glean from this. And as you can see, you're presented with a lot of information about the friendly units and what every unit on your side is doing. I've spent a little bit of time off camera deciphering all of this, but what it comes down to is that down here around the town of Kashuri, you can see all the friendly forces. I have blocking forces of main battle tanks. I have some AAA Gepard types. I have some Roland um, anti-aircraft missile units in here. A whole lot of stuff defending Kashuri, uh, well protected both from the ground and from the air. And Kashuri is also going to be my IP, so ultimately I'm going to be holding over this town, waiting for and getting directed by the JTACs onto enemy units that are going to be coming in from this line of approach, up this ravine or valley, into Kashuri itself. And I also have, from the south, another line of approach up this smaller ravine, up into the town. So that's what I'm going to expect is to be holding at the IP, and getting calls from both JTACs and then engaging targets as they appear. There's also a lot of other air assets in here working in the same area. So deconfliction, staying at a different altitude and a, and a different location from the other forces is going to be important so I don't run into anything or get shot by something by mistake. And what I've found is that in situations like this, and this is based on just other videos that I've done and some other missions I've flown off camera, is that the communications get really bogged down and especially when you're working with a JTAC or expecting calls from an AWACS aircraft 
there was so many uh, aircraft up and communicating at the same time, you could spend a couple of minutes waiting for a response from a JTAC. You might think that you've done something wrong, had the right, wrong frequency, but they're just backed up so much that you're not getting the responses in a timely manner. Same thing with an AWACS aircraft. So that's why I've disabled all Allied flight reports for this video. And it's going to be a little bit quieter on that front. I'm going to have slightly less situational awareness as far as what the other elements in this package and what else is going on around me. But it will make the communications a lot more cohesive and a lot more comprehensible for our purposes here. So things will be a lot smoother based on that, I'm sure. So, okay, overall plan on my part, it's a runway start in this case. So I'm going to have to do a lot of catch-up work as I'm en route to the target. And then it's just going to be a matter of coming up here to steer point three, up around a little bit to the northwest of Gori. Uh, that's my fence-in location. So I'll probably hold there, do some more setup work in the aircraft, and make sure that I'm caught up to where I want to be caught up to, make contact with the JTACs, fly down to the IP when directed, and then start engaging targets as they're called out. So it's a pretty straightforward mission. It looks like a lot of stuff going on here, but the plan is very, very simple on my part. So why don't we go ahead and get into the air and see what this mission holds in store for us. So I'll be right back. Okay, starting off on the runway, I've got my entire flight back there to the right, waiting to take off with me. So let me go around the cockpit real quick and just make sure everything is set up to my liking. Okay, comms I'll worry about once I get airborne. Okay, switches configured, everything is as I like it down there. Okay, flaps down, I'll get my target pod warming up. Tad, I'll worry about once I'm airborne. Okay, Eggy steer point. Okay, everything's just fine. Countermeasures, I'll go to standby. On, on, and on. Okay, and I've got my RWR up and running now as well. Okay, CDU. You we go to manual, steer point, flight plan, tech in, I'll go 22 x ray. That's the Vaziani tech end station. I'll do a quick ops check while I'm here on the ground just to make sure I've got that up as a good backup navigation reference. Okay, that's just fine. Exactly where it should be. Back to steer point. And I'll go volume down on my tech end so that it's not going to overpower me. And I'll just leave that up and running. ILS will worry about once I get into the air. And if I decide to do an ILS approach, I'll uh, have that back up and running again. Okay. So, let's go ahead and do this. Uh, break sail. Let me advance the throttles. Okay, I thought I had my brakes held. Okay, I'll take it. Uh, good engine instruments, good uh, good indications. Let me just kind of concentrate here on keeping it down the runway. Boy, the rudder is a little bit touchier than usual. Okay, nozzle steering disengaged, 70 knots. And I did a pre-calculation of my uh, uh, rotation and liftoff speed. Rotating at about 140 on this one. Expected liftoff at about 145 to 147, so... Okay, 140, let's rotate for 10 degrees. Uh, 149, airborne, let's go gear up. Okay, two's airborne right behind me. I'm just going to take it out here. Climbing left hand turn and get set up on some navigation here. Okay, uh, let me go ahead and disable my labels. So, uh, Shift F10 and then Shift F2, and I'll explain what I'm doing there. Uh, I had labels, or I have labels enabled for this flight, and they're just the air-to-air -air labels, and they're just like a couple of little pixels, and you can see they're on the runway. Just something to give me, uh, at a glance, nothing outrageous, just something that I can use to tell where my wingman is and where air assets that are right around me are. Uh, something I think is very, very realistic, at least more realistic than the alternatives, full labels or no labels at all. That's just, that's just me, but... Okay, three, four up, airborne, and two's on the rejoin. Okay, that's that's what I mean. Just being able to look back there and say, okay, yeah, I know he's right there somewhere, and be able to pick him up almost at a glance, just like uh, I imagined that you would be able to. Okay, so, like I said during the briefing, there's a lot of cleanup work to do once I get airborne. So let me go ahead and focus on my TAD. I'll make it sensor of interest, and I will put it into the expanded mode just so that I have my cardinal directions there is an easy reference, up being north, right east, south down, west left. That to me makes it a little bit easier to make sense of what's going on is to have it in this mode. Okay, Spike F-16s, those are my friendly F-16 flights. 
And let me pay a little bit more attention to my airmanship here. Get it come on around. Let me fly the aircraft, navigate, and then I'll get in here and work on the systems. Okay, so I've got about 90 degrees to go. I'm going to be... Oh, that can't be right, can it? No, let me step to the next steer point, which is right there at that water feature. Okay, let me trim it out for a gentle, a more moderate climb than that. And actually, let me let the aircraft work for me for once. Go to my path, autopilot mode. And let me set it up right here and just engage the autopilot. Let the aircraft keep me in that climb and just fly it out there over the steer point so that I can go heads down and do this without flying the aircraft all over the place. Okay, so I've got my TAD set up. I can see that already I have a flight of A-10s out there at 13,000 feet, a flight of F-16s. Yes, F-16s out there at 19,000 feet. And that would be that F-16 flight that I had the spike off of earlier on my RWR. You can see that I still have that E-3 up. Speaking of the E-3, let me go with VHF-AM and see if the, he can give me a picture and see if there's anything up as far as air threats. Okay, 275 for 80, that's more or less to the north, uh, just slightly north of west. So that's out there around the target area. Okay, got it. So three groups, one low altitude, two medium altitude. Okay, so 091 for 70, that's generally where they're at. And if you look down here on my TAD, I have steer point five, the cursor over steer point five, 091 for, for uh, 69, 68. So that is not what I'm looking at. No, that's the opposite of what I'm expecting. Okay, so here's bullseye right here. Let me get this into proper mode because I want to show this. Okay, so I've got... Okay, hook on. So that's 090 for, seven, for about 70 off of my location. What I was looking for was uh, the uh, bearing and range to bullseye or from bullseye. So bull hook. Okay, steer point five, the target area is 085 for 80. Okay, this is bearing range and altitude off of me. So that's 275 for 70 off of me, which is still that same general area. I hope all that made sense, at least, um, yeah, in one case we have calls coming in, bearing range and altitude off of me, other calls came in referencing bullseye, but they are all in that same general area, right up there around the target area. Okay, so at least I've got, I know I had those 16s up there in that target area helping me out, so I'm going to go ahead and step on over to steer point two, and start to get her into that location. Okay, altitude deconfliction for this flight of A-10s. I need to shoot for, have those at 13, 16s at, at uh, 19,000 feet. I'll shoot for about 16,000 feet, split the difference between these two. 16,000 is a good, for me at least, a good comfortable operating altitude for the A-10 with this type of uh, a loadout and the type of flying that I'm planning on doing. Just checking on my flight members real quick. Let me check on fuel. Okay, good fuel, fuel state. Everything's going just fine. Okay, so I've got the TAD at least <laughs> squared away the way that I want it. This is a lot of stuff that I would do normally uh, during the uh, mission prep and the uh, startup. Okay, 274460, that's uh, referenced off of me, so that's again out there in that target area. Hot, they're coming straight at me, so... I'll tell you what, I'm going to break these videos up into no more than about 15 to 20 minutes a piece. That's probably about 15 minutes right there. So, I'll tell you what, I'm going to come back next time with a continuation of the mission. And I hope you are enjoying it. If you are, please do consider leaving a like and leaving a comment. That helps me out, especially on the first video in a series, by uh, biasing the search results a little bit in my favor. Every little bit helps. So, uh, let me know if you are enjoying it, and I will see you next time.